Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. Hi, everybody. It's Taylor Collard here for Combat Sports UK. And I'm very happy to be joined by Kyle Driscoll, who is fighting at Cage Warriors 155 in San Diego in the main event against James Lynch on June 3rd. It's June third, isn't it? You guys have got coming up, so it's coming around very quickly. How are you doing today, Kyle? It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm doing well, man. Looking forward to this fight. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're all we're all looking forward to it. It's a big, big main event you've got coming up. How how are you feeling, kind of going into the fight? How has camp been? How's the preparations been going? <clears throat> it's been good. You know, it's uh, just chop wood, carry water, do the same thing, work hard, show up every day and come prepared. It's, there's no magic to it. I, I feel good. I feel prepared. Uh, I don't know. You know, I've kind of kept this under books, but I came back home. I've been at AK in California for seven years and just needed, uh, I didn't get to see family enough. You know, I, I hardly saw my grandma, my dad, my mom. So came back home. And this was the original plan all along was to go to the UFC and bring Tulsa, Oklahoma with me. So I think I went to California for seven years. I got the exposure I needed. I got, I, I became a UFC caliber fighter and I have here back in Tulsa, what I need, you know, we got Hunter Colvin, who's one of the top black belt competitors in the world. Like he's, you know, you got black belts who say I'm a black belt, but Hunter's out there. He's about to go for Polaris in London and mm -hmm. compete against uh i can't even say the guy's name but uh he he had a great adcc run hunter's one of the best um my coach leo perucci with ryan fati and Laurente. like i have the things i the resources i need here and so really it's kind of been refreshing to turn over a new leaf come back home i, I have the energy of my family and it's like that childlike love for it came back so i'm excited to 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 show all this hard work and bring Tulsa Oklahoma with me. Ah, oh, that's incredible, man! So you're gonna be you're gonna be kind of like your first fight in a long time, repping, repping the hometown, repping the home gym. And have you been? Have you been like you said? You've been out at AKA. Have you been able to take a lot of the knowledge that you gained from the you know the absolute killers row, really, a fighter that they've got there, back to back to Oklahoma? Yeah, and see that that was the thing out there was I just I was a sponge. That should have been my fight name was the sponge because, you know, there was a time, you know, I spent seven years out there, and there was a time period where John Fitch was like, "Hey, I'm going to be teaching at five p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays for everyone to show up." I was the first one there. I would journal what we learned. Josh Thompson during COVID, I was on short notice call for the UFC and Contender Series rolled around, and I got that opportunity, but AK was shut down. Josh Thompson was. Every day he was showing up, risking his his gym. He would open the doors. We'd sneak in the back, Romero Cotton and I, and we would get after it. Uh, Habib, I was under his guidance. I was his sparring partner, Islam, DC. And, but what I would do is I would journal everything. And I would, yeah. you know, because that works the other side of the brain and it helps you retain the information. And so it's not like I just was there mindlessly going through motions. Like I was very conscious of what I was doing. And, you know, I feel like an encyclopedia of knowledge that I've brought back with me and I just, it's just accumulating. So yeah, man, I'm grateful for my time spent there and that's family. That will always be family just because, you know, life happens and circumstances occur and you gotta, you gotta shift and adapt and, but that's my family. Hav became like a grandpa role to me. Coach Ron, one of my best friends, DC, Duran, like those are my people out there. Don't I don't want anyone to ever get that twisted. No, like you said, you, you spent a lot of time out there and those bonds, those bonds in the gym, they stayed together for, for a long time. I'm curious about, you know, you mentioned the journaling that as a very ph philosophical way to go about, about the fight game. Was that something you kind of did instinctively? Did you see other guys doing it? How, how did that kind of come about? I always did it like, you know, as a kid coming up in the fight game, I would journal to what extent I knew to journal, whether it was my thoughts or like if I had a good practice, what I did good, what I could work on. And it was when I started working with, you know, John Fitch and I became pretty close and 
he said he journaled his entire camp for GSP and he got to go back and show his kids like, and look back at like, Oh wow. On this day I did this and I had this. And uh, so I kind of took that and, you know, I'll like, like for Jamie, right. We, I, I go in by myself and just kind of look at what I see. And I think in, in, and in camp, you know, Hey, on this spar day, I could have done this better. I didn't like that. I was doing this. I did this really well. I just believe in journaling. I have some big goals and I have uh, this guy, Kevin. I know he runs this thing called success before sunrise at 6 AM. Every day you wake up and you journal your goals, whatever your goal is. Like, mm -hmm. I'm so happy and grateful now that I, or it feels so good now that, and you know, it's just, I think journaling is powerful. I think it's overlooked and, and yeah, that's an approach I've always taken to it. No, I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I couldn't agree with you more. It's something I put into my practice as well, and as a teacher, it's something I teach. I teach to my students as well. So to hear someone of, of your caliber and your level of competition doing the same thing, I think I think it's quite inspirational. Like I said, quite philosophical as well. So we kind of talking there. You mentioned about moving home. You've taken a bit of a break um, since your last fight was in. It was in last July, if I'm correct. Um, how has that break been for you? Has that kind of been to make the transition back home, like you said you'd always planned to do? Um, well, that fight with George, <clears throat> I broke my hand pretty bad. It was towards the end of that second round. He had that really good high guard, it threw a punch, hit his elbow. And I felt it. It was like, shit, like I got electrocuted up to my neck, but you know, George Hardwick's in your face. So I couldn't show him that I couldn't like express it on my face. I remember going back to the corner in the third round. I was like, guys, my hand, like, it just felt like you put a dynamite in my glove and let my hand blow up. And, but, you know, we got to go fight this guy. I felt I was up two rounds first rounds one and two. So, but George is a, George is a high level guy. So he started picking up on making the read because my right hand was keeping him away from those, for those body shots, right hand stopped coming anyway, get home, get the hand fixed. And then, Kyle Terra's Jiu Jitsu Academy is I, I would go there quite a bit. And they have like Yuri Samoz, Mason Fowler, Benji Silva, Alan, Sanders, some of the best grapplers on the planet right now. So got back and before the depression could hit of losing the title fight in London, I was at Kyle Terra's every day, just doing what I can, have my hand taped up, doing what I can, just being in the room. And then I was when I was able to like kind of grab and do some stuff i was showing up i was doing two days at kyle terrace academy grappling with those guys and then when adcc rolled around yuri samoz brought me in as his wrestling coach and he won adcc absolute setting him up for the super fight with gordon ryan so that was a really big deal for me i was super excited about that um but they ended up you know i spent August to December doing two days at Kyle Terra's. I don't, I didn't strike once. I was, wow. you know, what, you know, the, the depression sets in from the, from losing in London and I'm, I'm on the brink of everything I wanted. So that was how I battled that. And then it was in December, just given circumstances, I moved home, met up with my old coach from back in my, when I was like 19, 20 coach Leo Perucci. Uh, and, you know, we kind of, looked at it and said hey quarter two let's let's get back to mma focus mm -hmm. you know again put it on paper okay quarter one we're just gonna get the ball get, get the momentum going and let's let's look for, for a fight in quarter two of this year um so it all just kind of happened organically and it I'm, I'm i'm happy with how it how it's played out so i feel like i my jujitsu between august and december just hit a level i couldn't even imagine and then now i've just been fine-tuning all the striking dialing all that in finding the the holes that jamie gives us and that we can expose of him so yeah that's uh it, it all just happened organically it was uh mm -hmm. it, it i didn't intend to lay off this long but i think I think that a lot of growth occurred. I don't think it, it wasn't like I just sat around and did nothing, you know, and then said, Hey, let's fight. This was very methodically planned out. So I'm ready to rock. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think come, come June 2nd, um, we'll see, we'll see those, those gains that you've made that, that, that you've talked about and kind of that time off the process, think things through um, and then really 
start to uh, game plan your way towards towards improvement. So, talking about the matchup um, with, with with James coming up, I mean June. What what are your thoughts on James as a competitor overall? Have you been able to see much of his footage um, over his last few fights? What what are your thoughts kind of leading into the fight? Yeah, of course I watch his footage, uh, study him, find his tendencies. He's very flat footed. He walks. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. uh, we got, I mean, we know what we're coming. We, we got our game plan. I think, I think it's going to boil down to this. I'm going to kick him hard. I'm going to punch him hard. And he's going to take a shitty wrestling shot. And then we're, there's just, there's levels to wrestling. And I, I'm just, I want to, I want to show him early mm -hmm. that if this was a wrestling match, I would tech fall you. Because I when, what I've noticed about Jamie is when he can't take you down, he panics. Mm. He starts to panic and then he starts taking shots a little too far away, bringing his head to the outside. So I'm just going to show him that I'm better everywhere. I'm faster, I'm stronger, I'm more athletic. He seems like a respectful guy. It's just, you know, but but this is personal. He's in, I got a dream. I got a personal legend I'm chasing, right? Like I, I'm reading rereading the book Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Apollo Coelho and he talks about chasing your personal legend it's just firing me up again and you know this is I believe this is my personal legend this is what I was put here to do because at the end of the, when, when the going gets tough in this fight we're, we're gonna go to a dark place I'm gonna we're gonna be in each other's face he wants to come forward I know he does but the second you make him take a step backwards he takes a horrible shot we'll see what he does but the guy's a physician's assistant that's a great job you know he's probably making six figures out there in San Diego so mm -hmm. When we go to that dark place in my life, this is my life. And he knows that he's a, got a great six figure income. I just think there's two different mindsets there. I think, and we'll see, you know, I'm not, I would never underestimate somebody. It's I'm, I'm not an ignorant person, but I just don't see where this guy could do anything that I've never seen. Yeah, totally. I think one thing, you know, from watching your fights back in, in preparation for speaking to you today, you, you very much strike me as, as a fighter who you hear the phrase a lot, controls where the fight takes place. Um, and in watching kind of your fights, even the last one there, you tend to do that. You impose your will and you know that I get a sense of confidence that you know you can deal with it wherever the, wherever the fight goes. Is that, you know, in terms of your mindset going into the fight, do you very much approach it like that as you say, well, okay, I can take this wherever I want it to. So let's kind of see how it plays out. Or is it a bit more methodical as if I'm going to try this in the second round or something like that? No, I try to – I don't really get caught up on second round we're going to open this. I It's it's more of like uh, look at him. You know, we're creatures of habit. So so mm -hmm. Jamie just fought. I don't know when that was the first Cage Warriors card of this year. He just fought. So there's no giant leap he can make between now and then. He's going to have the same tendencies. He's going to have the same habits. He's going to – operate very similar you know there's that that's just how it goes and so i just look at that i see where we can exploit him and then i don't get caught up i'm gonna go out there and have fun i'm gonna be loose i'm gonna be free i'm gonna put a pace on him and if he wants to wrestle we'll wrestle if he wants to do jujitsu we'll do jujitsu if he wants to strike i'll like i don't worry about that i just am gonna go mm. and and you know i think there was a little I built up the George Hardwick fight a little too much. It was like wrestler versus striker. And in my head, I was like, man, I'm my striking's way better than like I can outstrike this guy. Screw that. I don't need to wrestle him. Though my coaches are calling me like in when we're in London in the back, you know, they're like, hey, Coach Hav always said on the chessboard, my wrestling is my queen. Cause in my sparring, I would like to, I would, I would just strike sometimes because I wanted to show, like, no, I can outstrike him. And Coach Hov called me before the fight, and he said, hey, you have to use your queen tonight. I said, Coach, I'm going to. I'm going to wrestle this guy. Mm -hmm. Got out there with George, and I started landing some shots, busting him up, and I was like – I even said to him, I was like, George, I don't need to wrestle. And that's where my mind went. And then when my hand shattered, I started panic wrestling. But I don't I don't need to prove that anymore, you know. I don't – I'm going to – I'm going to wrestle Jamie – I'm going to punch Jamie. Jamie's going to try and punch me. I'm I'm better everywhere. It's that simple. 
there we go there we go and yeah that's something that i picked up on in, in that fight and you could even hear it on the commentary waiting when's carl gonna when's carl gonna shoot when's carl gonna shoot he's gonna set up the hands and he's gonna shoot so i think i think something of your of that in your skill set something i really enjoy kind of watching the fights is you must have a, a bit of unpre unpredictability you want to try and control the fight control control kind of um where it goes so you know all being well after this fight how do you see this year kind of panning panning out for you would you like to be a bit more active um than you have been now that you're kind of settled back home you know how's it look obviously all, all being well from this fight yeah i want to take i'm looking at this as like the start of a season right you look at sports and they have seasons so yeah. i'm entering my season i'm gonna i'm gonna beat up jamie and then i'm gonna i have in my head what i see are a couple options beat up jamie and then i want to potentially bring the cage warriors lightweight world title to san diego for the next time they come or i beat up jamie i go to contender series again punch my mm -hmm. ticket to the ufc or i beat up jamie and my manager talks to Sean and we punch our ticket to the UFC. I see one of those three options playing out. I'm happy within all three, three of them. Um, that that's, that's where, that's what I see. Ah, awesome. Awesome. So any kind of, any kind of final shout outs, any, anybody you kind of want to shout out to before the fight, even maybe give us a little bit of a prediction. If, you, if you've got that in your mind at the moment, before we finish up. Yeah, I'm going to finish him with the rear naked choke. I'm not nice. really, I don't care about the round. Um, he'll give it to me. I don't. Rear naked choke at some point. Um, all my sponsors, All Good Studios, TXMZ, Kale Reps, my manager, Orrin Hodak, he's the freaking man. Um, my coach, Leo Prucci, out here. I don't want to sit here and give Tate, my boy, Tulsa Seal Coach, strike me like, all my sponsors, um, my mom, my girlfriend, my dad, my grandma, like just everyone who supports me. You know, this has been a long journey. I've been doing this since I was 17. I'm almost 29 years old. Uh, you know, I used to sit as a kid with some of my buddies and what do you want to be? I want to fight in the UFC. I'm going to be back then. I said, Kyle, the St. Driscoll. But nonetheless, I'm still creating that same thing. Right. And so just everyone who supports me, who's with me on this journey, the highs, the lows, that's what makes it beautiful. You know, you got to ride through the lows to enjoy the highs and June 2nd, we're going to enjoy one of the highs. So uh, thank you to you for this. This helps us, man, get our voice out there, get, get all this. Uh, I'm just grateful for every step of this process, man. I'm looking forward to getting in there. Awesome. Awesome. And with that, everyone from uh, combat sports UK, wishes you all the best on the fight that, Cage Warriors 155 in San Diego uh, in a lightweight main event versus James Lynch, James Lynch, June 2nd. Kyle Driscoll, thank you so much for your time. And like I said, we all wish you the best of luck with the fight come June 2nd. Thank you. I appreciate it.